Yo, what up? This is Joe Andaloro on the, on the Hollywood Raw podcast. I'm going to be talking about the craziest celebrity experiences I had during my 10-year 10 10-year 10 experience as a TMZ camera guy in Hollywood and in Malibu. I'm going to tell you some of the craziest Malibu stories you could ever imagine. Please join Adam and Dax and myself for the Hollywood Raw podcast. Can't wait to see you. Hey guys, welcome to the Hollywood Raw YouTube page. Make sure you drop a comment, like, subscribe. Do all the fun things. Follow. Follow everything. We're here to entertain you guys. What are you waiting for? Hurry up, let's go. Enjoy. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Hollywood Raw Podcast. I'm Dax Holt, joined by my co-partner over there in New York, Adam Glenn. Adam, how are you? I'm good, Dax. Excited for today's episode. Always good to talk to a fellow journalist, or some of you weird people might call them paparazzi. But uh, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> listen. It goes either way. We can handle it. But it's we're, but you we're, know we're, what? We're These paparazzi episodes are legit. The ones that I think we get the most feedback. The most people asking for another paparazzi, I think that there's just a, a glimpse into Hollywood that they have a different perspective than like anyone else. And so it's really a fun time. And Joe, I mean, you, me, Joe, we worked at TMZ for ages together. Um, and so I'm excited to have him on. Um, he's not there anymore, but um, he, I know he's going to have us some good stories. I mean, he was stationed in Malibu for a long time. He, he's kind of done it all. And uh, as far as paparazzi go, this guy was one of the best. And still, I, I mean, he's kind of taking a little bit of a break, but he's still one of the best that is out there. Yeah, and it was crazy. He was, from what I remember with Joe, he was the Malibu guy. And Malibu, to me, is my favorite part of L.A. I think it's unbelievable. It's beautiful. It's just so scenic. Tons of celebrities live there. And Joe is like the face of Malibu. Like he's the guy at the, near the markets and the stores, and there's really bougie stores up there. And Joe was like, you know, he's what Joe does is different than your normal paparazzi. Normal paparazzi are about 80 feet, 90 feet away shooting photos. Joe has, has to actually interact with these celebrities. So it's not easy. It's not fun. So I want to hear how his interactions with some of these celebrities are from the good, the bad, the ones that he wished he had another chance. Oh, you at. know, we love the ugly stories. We As, love that's ugly. why people are here. They want to hear the ugly stories. And this is, <laughs> if this is your first time checking out the Hollywood Rob podcast, definitely go back. We have interviewed numerous paparazzis. We just we like breaking down that fourth wall of Hollywood, humanizing celebrities. So we've got interviews with paparazzis, bodyguards. Uh, media moguls, the people that make them famous. I mean, we, we've kind of talked to a little bit of everyone, and then obviously celebs themselves. We talked to some massive celebs, reality stars. If you're into housewives, we've talked to numerous housewives. We've talked to MTV stars like Farrah Abraham and the situation. I mean, we, we our archive is ridiculous. So definitely go check it out if you get a sec. And uh, before we get started, we want to give you we want to give uh, a couple of our listeners a little shout out people who have stopped by and left us a review on itunes we really appreciate it. it is the best thing you can do for us we don't get paid money we get paid by your reviews because that takes us up the charts and uh, helps people discover our podcast so we're going to take a second right here and say thank you let's see got one from kate sir Gave us a five-star review, said delightful, so happy I stumbled across this thanks to Demois. Uh, yes, we were on Demois's podcast, Do You, the other day, and uh, we got a lot of new listeners. So, Kate, sir, and Demois lady, thank you for uh, <laughs> helping discover this podcast. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, Jules0421, love this podcast, gave five star, and thank you for not asking for money. Laugh out loud. I love your format, <laughs> counting down all the tea. See, Jules, listen, this was this was like you paying us. This, this was better than money for us right now. Well, not we're better not, than money, but this is what Patreon. we can do. Yeah, we're not a Patreon. We're not asking for money. We're just asking for good reviews. That's the best thing to do to show you. Should I do podcast. one more? One more, Dax, go for Dude, it. Dude, the reviews are flying in. Like, I, I feel like I need to give a couple no, shout-outs to people. I want to give shout-outs to some of the good listeners. 
Okay, one more. Mookie's one, two, three, four, five says funny and informative. Adam and Dax have such great interview style, lots of laughs while also taking all of the questions we want answers to. So Mookie's one, two, three, four, five. Thank you. All right, thank let's you. get to this podcast. And thank you to all those people that just took the extra second out of the day. Really, really appreciate it. With that said, Dax, tell us about our guest today. All right, our guest today is a former TMZ paparazzi legend, and uh, he also worked for Fox Business. Uh, he is a veteran in this space, Joe Andalaro, uh, and a good friend of ours. Joe, welcome to the podcast, buddy. So, Joe, thank you for coming on the podcast. I've been wanting to have you on for a long time. Its reason is, is because people love the paparazzi episodes, and I know people consider you a paparazzi. They consider me a paparazzi. However... I consider myself a journalist, and I consider you a journalist because you are a veteran at what you do. You're so good at what you do. You understand people. So when people start to label you a paparazzi, how do you how do you feel when people say, oh, they define your job as a paparazzi? How do you defend that, or do you just accept it? No, I, I defend it. Uh, first of all, I'm an Italian-American, and Federico Fellini is an idol of mine. He, he once said – my favorite quote – is, Wait, who who is Federico Federini? The greatest Italian director of all time. You may remember him, uh, La, La Dolce Vita, La Strada. Okay. So he, he was a surrealist. No he's idea. the Salvador Dali of film, but he's phenomenal. The movie Eight and a Half. Um, you'll see a lot of his stuff referenced in modern cinema. But he coined the term paparazzi, which means he made it up. And it means a flying, annoying insect. And as an, <laughs> an Italian-American... That's like calling a Mexican guy La Cucaracha, you know? <laughs> La Cucaracha, you know? And, and, and I love the guy. And the thing is, a paparazzi to me, I, I don't own a camera. I don't know the difference between a DSLR and a mirrorless Sony F-stop 20 millimeter. I never took one photo. So how, and I never, I maybe hit, hit in a bush once, okay? Paparazzis, they hide in bushes. You don't see them. You saw us, the TMZ field producer, AKA TMZ camera guy, extremely unique position that we held for a long time, decade, a decade, over a decade. We engaged with celebrity, but at the same time, we were also producing other TV shows, quite a few. In fact, one, my friend Adam Glenn here hosted, <laughs> South of Wilshire. I, I field produced that program. So at the same time, yes, there was, we were essentially, there was an element of paparazzi. Yes, there, there was some voyeurism for sure that made me second guess what I was doing. And, you know, there was ethics came into play. Um, but there, it, it wasn't essentially paparazzi. It was, a, it was a unique position where we engaged celebrities. They knew we were there. We talked to them. And we were rolling video. So, you, but I, Joe, I always said this about you. I said you were... You were very, very good at your job because it was the way you approached people. You approached them, obviously, in your tone, your voice. It was very chill. It wasn't too much. It was very respectful. But what was your strategy when approaching celebrities? Because for me, I always say it's like a hit on guys, a hit on girls. Like, But when you approach people, what's your, what are you trying to do to kind of bring their guard down? I like to be – I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a pop culture fanatic, and I think that, you know – I've been inspired by so much of the arts uh, and so many of these uh, celebrities and these artists work and they could be a D list celebrity, you know, but they, they, they had a, an effect on me and I would bring up a moment. I always like to bring up a moment of like, not like too much of a fan, but bring up something obscure. And I always like to introduce myself, which I got in trouble for actually for introducing myself by a former manager she would call me and say, don't introduce yourself. And I would say, I'm Joe with TMZ. I'm, I'm identifying myself. I'm a member of the press. But I always identified myself. And, and I was doing really well until I was told to not identify myself because it wasn't particularly, particularly on brand, which I thought was bizarre because here we are coming up in the middle of a parking lot. you know. And, and I'm coming up to celebrities like the guy from like Best in Show who was like had a couple lines. You know, like who'd never been like what certain celebrities that we approached were never approached by paparazzi. Mm -hmm. We were approaching people that didn't get attention by paparazzi. You know, like Rick Springfield. I was like Rick Springfield was like an uncle to me. You know, the guy that did Jesse's girl, you know, like I introduced myself to these types of people. 
And, um, and it was really just being a fan of theirs. And then, and then having to find the news angle and, and being polite, as polite as possible. So Joe, you said something a moment ago, like when you first had your interaction with Dave Navarro and he gave off the impression that he didn't like someone with a camera in his face. I feel like that is a big misconception about paparazzi and celebrities that celebrities don't want paparazzi there. But I feel from my knowledge in this industry, they very much want paparazzi there. They just don't always want to portray they want them there. What has been your kind of uh, experience with celebs and paparazzi or celebs in your line of work? It, it, it's it's a love hate relationship, and there is some act, they're actors, so they do have to act like. And even if there's a setup, there was times where we were set up by them, and they would act like their PR, their publicist, even themselves would call, and they would act like they didn't want us to interview them, which is bizarre. But it, it, it's an act, and it's a way of seeing. But like, why? Why? Like, why would someone call up the paparazzi? And then pretend they didn't want to be there talking to them. like that's what I don't understand. Like, wh- is it? I don't get it. I don't I get an it. I have an answer for you, Dax. Hollywood is a high school. It's a high school. It's a popularity contest. Everybody's trying to be cool, and I don't know if it's still that way. It it, it, it might be changing a little bit. Like right now, we're in an age of sensationalism where the celebrity has kind of changed. It, it's, it's been dramatic. It, it's dramatically changed over the course of the last decade. You guys have to agree with the advent of social media, but it's a, it's, it's a high school. It's, it's an image thing. And I think that like, I'm the cool guy. I can't be, you know, Leo DiCaprio was probably one of the most unfriendly interactions. It was a no interaction, but like there was a listers who were the coolest ones. Those guys tend to not be that cool you know even though some are like keanu reeves the sweetest guy like unbelievable you could talk to him he might not want to engage with you on camera but you know he, he did for me at the end my lot one of my last great clips is i got keanu reeves to talk which was crazy uh yeah no keanu reeves to get keanu reeves to talk and it's funny i say the same thing I always say the bigger the celebrity, the cooler they are. Now, it's weird because Leo, Leo DiCaprio will never talk to us. However, you know, uh, like you just said, Keanu Reeves will actually talk to you. You know, he'll talk to you off camera. Leo won't even talk to you off camera, really. But, like, Keanu Reeves is actually a nice person. He's a pleasant guy. Uh, I mean, you've had – I mean, the thing is, too, you, where did you, you – where, where was your territory, per se, where you mostly were? Malibu was my bread and butter. I felt that I was kind of exiled to Malibu at one point, but I made Malibu my home. And at, at one point I made Malibu just flourish. I don't know what, maybe it was the, the spirit of Michael Landon, but I was in Malibu every day for 10 hours a day for about five years straight. I <laughs> love Malibu. Is it going to get older? Like I, I Dax, do you like Malibu? I love Malibu. Malibu. No, I, I love Malibu. I don't like getting to Malibu. I do everything I can to avoid having to go to a meeting, a lunch, a dinner, anything in Malibu because it's so fucking far out of the way. And if you've never been to L.A., you wouldn't understand. But, like, L.A. is already so shitty with traffic that, like, getting anywhere takes a long time. But Malibu, there's, like, one way in, and that's PCH. And it is a long drive of, like, kind of, like, two two streets on each side going each way. And if there's an accident, if there's traffic, you're totally boned and you can't do anything about it. So I hate going to Malibu, but once you're there, it's beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah. I just had my, I was an installation there. I was, I, I would get there in the morning at the Starbucks and then you just randomly see Pamela Anderson. There, there's so many celebrities at the time lived there. This was around 2011 to 2015 Around 2015, 2016, they, there was an exile. I don't know where everybody went. They all just left. But I would say you were there during the golden age yeah. of Malibu and the Country Mart, and yeah. the amount of people Britney Spears would go down to that Starbucks like every day. Pink would be out there walking around. I mean, it's just like nonstop people would be in Malibu when you were there. Absolutely, it was incredible, and I. I would just every day talk to Dick Van Dyke. I mean, I, what a legend, you know? And I, I just, 
it was it was surreal and it was it was a paradise and i would i would swim on my lunch breaks i'm not gonna lie <laughs> and there was and there was there, there was restrooms you go in anywhere other beat in la there's nowhere to use the restroom you know it's a 10 hour day i, I need to use, I, I found the most cleanest incredible palaces <laughs> to take a deuce and i didn't know like that out of it. it was like <laughs> there, there was a dog park like because Malibu's big it's rural too it's 27 miles long and about 10 miles wide it's a huge area so there's some rural like really nice untouched public restrooms that uh that I became very familiar with <laughs> I get it dude no the, especially New York City like it's me me and the other guys on the streets yeah. are like, we're like we know which hotels have a good bathroom and which ones like you can make into an office which ones they'll allow you in which ones they won't allow you in but how are the businesses to you like you know obviously if you're you're one of the only tmz guys in malibu at the time there's probably i don't know how much paparazzi there is out there but the people the regular folks when they saw you at the country mart when they saw you outside the supermarket the starbucks were they nice to you did they tell you get a good a job or the business is cool to you or were they dicks to you became so the people who worked at these stores became some of my dearest friends in my life uh, I, I could name 20 people that are some of the dearest that I go to their parties. I, I hang out with them. I got some really good discounts, guys. <laughs> Seven, I got employee discounts at a lot now, of these. Now what, I, it, my is, money. is this because they appreciated what you were doing? You're bringing publicity to Malibu that you were putting their store on the map. Like, why do you think that they treated you different than let's say being at LAX? Dax, it was because I was there for so long every single day. I was there 10 hours a day, five days a week. I was there more than they were. So I would go in and I, I, I'm a shopper. I love the smell of commerce in the morning. It's from the mall, movie Mall Rats. But I just, I love shopping. You know, I love looking around a store and engaging with, you know, strangers. So I, I just talked to everybody and I just became close. I'd go in when a lot of these stores would have events and celebrities would host and I'd be on the inside. I would film it. Jack Black would be in there and I'd be, you know, just showing off their new you know, art and their new clothing line. They loved me. But yes, they, I did give them publicity. And at Taverna Tony, the owner, I'd go in, the owner would have me. He would, I can't say too much, but, you know, Tom Cruise would be in there. Okay, you know. okay. Tell me this. What is your biggest video that people would know about that you filmed in Malibu? Hmm. Whew, that's a good one, dude. Um, you know, I, I did. I got Tom Cruise to talk. Wow. In Malibu. That's in huge. Malibu. And it was, was the first. Yeah. yeah. It was, what was the, that like? It was at Taverna Tony. He was there. You, you, you don't see the Lord out <laughs> but lord cruz was out and i asked him how he was doing this was the first clip that he had been in since his breakup with katie holmes this is how we're going back a ways this must have been 2012 and he said i'm doing great and that was it it was, it was a big clip um I, there were so many guys i can't even i mean Mel Gibson was a huge one. Uh, the trip and fall incident with Mel Gibson was a, was a big one. Um, oh, here, I got one. I got one. Here's, here's an iconic Malibu one. It's not the, it's not, it was Britney Spears. I only filmed her once and Annette Funicello had died, just died, passed away. Annette Funicello, famous Mouseketeer. I put two and two together. Britney Spears at Marmalade. I had, this is the one time I ever saw Britney Spears. I never followed her. Never was around her. Never wasn't. I missed that Britney Spears train. Otherwise, I probably would have been the one who was dating her. <laughs> you would have been ad dog. Yeah, but uh, so she comes out of Marmalade, and I said, "Hey, Britney, what do you think about the passing of your fellow Mouseketeer and Net Funicello?" And she said, "I think it's great." <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah, and it was a huge. TMZ posted. Oh, Britney. Britney Spears thinks the net food cello dying is great. Oh God. Huge, huge. It, it created a huge, like, you know, and this was before things were even going viral on Twitter. This was like Twitter wasn't even around. It was like, I don't know, 2013. And um she had to come out and apologize and stuff. But yeah. poor Britney, she, didn't, <laughs> she didn't hear the question, and I knew it. You know, I knew it, but they posted it because it was Britney saying this, you know. 
But she's Joe, like, were, you, were you the one that got the video of Pink saying hi to me years ago? Absolutely. Yes. That was me. Dude. Yes. I, yeah. So, Adam, you know I'm the biggest Pink fan, like, on the planet. I love her to death. She is just so badass. And Diana one day, who was running the your guys' department, uh, you know, sending out the paps and stuff. She was like, I got a video for you. And I'm like, what is it? And you had gotten pink. She was walking through the country mart to say hi to me. And I almost fell over in the office because I am such a huge fan. Thank you, dude. I didn't That's know that was you, did, but thank dude, you. I admired your work, man. And I was like, <laughs> in hers, here she is. She, I was on her good graces. I was in her good graces because there was an incident she had with a pap. Uh, mm-hmm. Carrie Hart and her had an incident with a pap who was a little bit, uh, you know, unruly. <laughs> and and it became, it's on, you can watch this online. Um, he confronted her and it was kind of, and Carrie Hart's friend uh, took his camera and smashed it. And I filmed the whole thing go down. And I hung out with Pink that night. Like, I was like, look, you know, he's a good guy. He's going through something. Let's just, and then ever since then, Pink was cool to me. Like, I just became close with pink and carrie hart they were just like they respected me and, and that and that's saying a lot because she she hasn't had the best relationship with camera people i know that they had a rough time for a while um so you having a good relationship i think uh says a lot a lot a lot it really does yeah and i love first, her <laughs> i really do she's a she's great and at first she was very standoffish because she thought there because some of these paps, these paparazzis are very confrontational because they're looking for something. It's like any fast in society. You're going to have guys that are bad seeds, you know? Yeah. And I'm not saying, I think this guy was having a real bad day, but um, they they just have had some negative interactions that that kind of ruined it for the rest of us, you know? Yeah. I was like, that, that's not who I am. You know, I'm not. I need, I need to find that video. Damn, I had that video somewhere. I need to find that. If I find it, I'll put it up on our uh our page <laughs> because yeah. it's my, but if it's like on an old hard drive or something but, so joe you know, i had i had i had thou- i had thousands of clips you know <laughs> dude i i was there so I it's hard for me to kind of catalog like i used to have so many before cameo i would get so many celebrities to do shout outs to people i know and then also when cameo came out i like i, I i'm afraid to approach celebrities like hey can you do a video for my friend like once in a while, I'll have them do it, but it's just not the same ever since Cameo came out because I just don't want them to say, hey, I want they do, you just pay 50 bucks and get me to do a Cameo. I'm like, eh, I don't want to ask them. Still but Joe, do it. Still yeah. do it. No, still do it. I, I did that. Uh, Joe, I want to <laughs> ask you, in Malibu, obviously you said it's so big. So how did you find celebrities? Who was reaching out to you? Were you just riding? A, like what was your normal day? Would you just kind of move around or what, and just try to run into people? What do you do? Well, I'd go to Starbucks, and then in the morning at Starbucks, there was a group of, uh, I'd call them the Malibu, like, Kiwanis Club, okay? And they were literally the Kiwanis Club, and I was very close. I just, I'm an old soul, so I connect with, like, older guys, older women, older guys, er, older people. And so I would sit and have, like, donuts with this this group of guys that consisted of, like, maybe two homeless guys, <laughs> but then a billionaire, Ozzy, his name's Ozzy Silna, he's a billionaire. He, he was part of the the, the largest, uh, the biggest sports deal in, in history. He was paid, his team, the St. Louis Spirit, uh, was contracted by the ABA into the NBA, and they gave him money. This was back in the early 70s and said, we're going to pay you in perpetuity. Then the 80s happened. This guy became a billionaire from the, from the NBA. So Ozzy Silna, Dick Van Dyke. And uh, the Kiwanis Club of Malibu, this guy named John, all these like locals and maybe a homeless guy or two. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Ozzy still the billionaire, the cheapest guy ever. Like he bought me coffee once, but it was at Ralph's, not even at Starbucks. This guy was worth <laughs> billion. And all these homeless guys thought that, you know, when Ozzy, who rest in peace, he's passed away. And TMZ ran a story because I, I told him I was like, Ozzy Silna died, you know, and Ozzy would take me around. And he would kind of show me, he would be like, hey, you want to go run some errands with me? I'll show you. You know, I took it as part of research, you know, so he would take me in a Sarah retreat, show me where, you know, uh, the Kelsey Grammer lived, you know, show me other celebrities' houses, show me his house, t- 
take me down Broad Beach Road and just show me. I, I knew where every celebrity lived. Reggie Miller, Matthew Perry, you know. And so there was three locations in Malibu. The Country Mart, the Starbucks, which is in Ralph's Colony Plaza. That Ralph's is, is a dive. It is trash. I saw a pigeon in the deli, but then you had Halle Berry buying pita chips. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so for a time being, it was Sam Elliott every day. And fortunately, Harvey loved Sam Elliott. It was Jillian Michaels every day. And these be people became family. There was the vitamin bar, Neil Young, Daryl Hannah. Neil Young would go in through the back because there was paparazzi up front. And he had a he had a, an electric Lincoln. You know, Lincoln, this was 2013. He, he had a, it was called a Link Volt. It was a big boat convertible Lincoln that was electric because he's real green, you know, but, uh, but, you know, legends like that, just everywhere, you know, and Glenn Campbell, I just got to know Glenn Campbell. I mean, this is insane. Like These, these are, these are the rhinestone cowboy himself just sitting there. Dick Butkus. I got a funny story about Dick Butkus real quick. And Dax, you're probably this, maybe you're, you probably laughed at this joke in the, in the newsroom. Dick Butkus, I'm from Chicago. Dick Butkus is an icon in Chicago. He's the greatest, like, Chicago Bear top five of all time. He's up there with Walter Payton. I, I heard about this. My grandpa was a football player, you know, an Army guy, you know? And he's like, Dick Butkus, I, I was born. He's like, hey, Dick Butkus was a, is a great guy, you know? And so Dick Butkus used to go to the Rouse, and I interviewed him. And I was talking to him about CTE. The con in concussion maybe it just came out and pe players junior say how it committed suicide. So I was getting this great, he, and, and he gave me this great soundbite, Dick Butkus. He said, it's not about the helmet. You could have a Bentley around your head, but you need to strengthen your neck muscles. All us guys, when we were younger, we strengthen our neck muscles and that helps with the brain injuries. So Dick Butkus is giving me this incredible soundbite. And then the TMZ newsroom, they just want to make fun of his name and said, who, who would name their kid uh, Dick with a last name Butkus? <laughs> the next time I saw Mr. Butkus, he was pissed. He said, I don't watch your show, but I heard what you guys said about me and I think it's disgusting. And I said, it wasn't me. I didn't do it. It was the, it was the schmucks in the newsroom. <laughs> I mean, in our defense in the newsroom, who would name their child Dick Butkus, right? I mean, come on. Come on. You got a point, you got a point so, but it puts me, it puts, it put us yeah, sometimes. We, I, so, that, yeah, when the newsroom would, didn't matter, even with Dick, I had the same thing. Like, you do, try to be the nice guy. You're the one who has to deal with the celebrity. So, you're the one who just like ruin, it ruins your relationship because the newsroom makes the joke. It ruined it. And it ruined hundreds. It did. It just did. It like, it, it literally did. And, you know, but I, it is what it is, you know, at mm -hmm. least they're still paying me. And it's funny because most of it, like from the other side of it, being in the newsroom, it's like, you're just trying to make content. You know what I'm saying? So like you knew that a guy talking about strengthening his neck muscles was not going to make air. So you're like, how do we make this fun, funny, entertaining so that it actually makes air that night? And yeah. it, you would, you that, would find anything. I was shooting for PBS. It would have made PBS. <laughs> <laughs> so, Joe, I want to I want to ask you like, with this whole Johnny Depp trial. You know, TMZ's kind of been in the spotlight, and I think what Johnny's team was trying to do was essentially, essentially trying to allude to the fact that Amber called TMZ and uh, would tip them off. They didn't really get any of that information out. I don't even know being there whether or not she did or she didn't. It just it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? But I think that's what Johnny's team was trying to get, to get out of uh, the wits the other day. My question for you, do you, did you ever have celebrities calling you and saying, I will be here. Come shoot me. Uh, most of the time it came from the desk. From the desk. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had celebrities call me, but the celebrities in my Rolodex, like I said, I'm a huge, like, you know, I like D-list, like old celebrities that were kind of irrelevant. So mm -hmm. the ones that were like that would get the the, the palette of the, the desk, you know, attention. So most of the time it was from from the desk. Um, 
yeah, I would get D-listers. I would get, I would get a lot, you know. And, and lot sorry, let me clarify. Yeah. Adam and I are pro celebs calling apps. We are all about it. By all means, line them up, have them call them because we think it is a great business move for both sides. Yeah. It helps the pap out. It helps the celebrity out, keeps them relevant. So don't take that question as no. anything negative. I, I am all for celebs calling the paps. Yeah. I'm just, uh, interested if you yourself were getting yes. called by celebs. Yeah, one, one comes to mind. And um, there, was, there was many. Uh, Clifton Powell, who portrayed Pinky in Fr Next Friday, Mm -hmm. um, he was also a menace to society, he played Chauncey, great character. I adore this guy, grew up with him. And so he was going through uh, some, some legal problems where he was um, falsely accused and he wanted to clear his name. And I had met him years back and we were just having banter. And um, I got his number and he, he, would, he, he would give me like, he he gave me the great advice. He said, Mucinex and whiskey clears a, f a flu. It really does. He's like, you <laughs> got a Mucinex? And I never really heard of Mucinex at the time. I was like, Mucinex? What is that? I always take like Dayquil. But Mucinex and whiskey. He's like, that'll, that'll clear you up, bud. But um, in this clip, you can, you can look this up. It's on YouTube. It's a beautiful clip. Um, he's like, hey, I want to clear my name. Uh, I just was, I'm going through this legal problem. And I, I, I think he was close to clearing his name legally, uh, where a woman had accused him, similar to what Johnny Depp's going through. And a lot of times celebrities, because the media has such power on, on public opinion, and it, it sways the judicial system, which is really insane. It's, it's crazy. We saw it with R. Kelly. We saw it with, with Bill Cosby. We've seen it, where public opinion and the media, and it can, it, it can sway the, the judicial system. And so Clifton called me and I met him and I did this interview and he cried, he, he cried and he just said he really wanted to clear his name. So yeah, yeah, that, that, that did happen. And I felt very fulfilled. And I, and I think it, it worked like you were able to help someone out that needed some attention on a situation they're having. So uh, again, I think it, it really can work for their advantage. Did restaurants ever call you to say, Hey, we got celebrities here. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, most of the time, it was like busboys, mm. you know, and, and valets and stuff. But I was I was a day crew guy, so I never worked at night. I worked night maybe a couple times just because I had you know I needed to fill in for someone. Uh, I think that happens more at night for night crew. Like there's night crawler and day crawler. I was more of a day crawler, so I was more of the coffee shops lunch spots shopping but i to be honest i survived it being a spotter i was just a yeah. spotter i could spot a celeb like like nothing you know i could gilbert godfrey 100 yards down the road like there's gilbert you know so wait, but, how, how do you become a good spotter like why you know people are like what do you mean people always ask me like how do you just spot a celebrity what do you is it just like it's a six for me this is how i describe it i describe it, it's like a sixth sense for me and it's something that was exhausting at first because I'd walk down the street and look at people's faces. But now I've gotten used to just kind of doing that. Like I'm not as, I don't get tired from that anymore. It becomes almost like a, my own personal scavenger hunt. Like, let's see if I can recognize someone. But how, would, how do you spot someone? I, I think it's psychological. I think it's a brain. It's something in your brain that, that is able to uh, judge facial recognition. I, it really is. It's like a software. Some people are gifted with it. And it actually was one of the my. It's one of my gifts that I was able to utilize. That said, man, I'm really, I'm a really damn good spotter. Like I, I spotted this guy named Pete Koch. Okay, he was, he was. I just knew him from that movie Lover Boy with Patrick Dempsey. Remember that movie? Mm -hmm. He played Carrie Fisher's husband, the Beefcake. Okay, and he's not famous. He, you'll see him on commercials every once in a while. He's always at Gold's Gym. Beautiful man, you know. But I spotted him and I said, that's the guy from Loverboy. This is 30 or 40 years later. He looked completely different. And I was like, you're the guy from Loverboy. Like that, I, that I think is, I don't want to say superhuman, but I think it was just a gift. Like an intuition. Like and he, it, it was, it was him. And he was a Kansas City chief. He was like, he, he's, a, he's a legit celebrity. I see him on commercials because he, he aged really well. He's got silver fox guy, you know. But he was the beefcake and lover boy, pizza with extra anchovies. I just remember him from that movie on HBO when I was like twelve. That's awesome. Was there was there a moment 
in your career that was just like, this shit's crazy. Like a moment that you remember and you think back, like, I can't believe I was there for that moment or I can't believe I captured that conversation on film or just something that really sticks out in your mind as like a, a memorable time with you holding a camera. Yeah, for sure. And Adam actually pitched it on the show. It was, well, there's two, there's two moments that are similar. I like to sing and rap and stuff. Like I'm kind of an artist, you know, I'm an artist. And so I, I rapped for Snoop. I didn't know what to mm. do. You know? And it was actually another, it was Andrew Capuchetti's idea. He said, dude, you should rap for Snoop. Cause I karaoke a lot. We'd go to Vegas. He'd see me karaoke gin and juice. I sound just like Snoop. I could sound, people think it's a record playing when I start busting my Snoop. <laughs> well, I, just, I, mean, I, grew up, I grew up in Chicago. Just I, I hip hop's my thing, and I, I was actually an aspiring rapper before this too. I was actually like, past demos to Kanye and shit, you know. And so, I started rapping for Snoop outside of Jimmy Kimmel. There's no other way to get a celebrity's attention outside of Kimmel. There's a hundred paps. I happen to have a speaker with the Bluetooth. I put on the instrumental for nothing but a G thing, which is my favorite one to do of Snoop's voice, and I just started busting. One, two, three into the foe, Snoop, doggy, doggy, doggy. And I just started rapping when he came out. The dude had a camera on him, a DSLR, and started pointing at me and started filming the whole thing. And he was just getting down outside of his tour bus, like, damn, this dude is chopping it up. And I started flowing. It became a pretty viral thing. And Adam, you pitched it beautifully on the show. Thank you. I remember this, yeah. And yeah, and it was a web clip and a TV show clip, and both are online to check out. But so that was that was probably you know my favorite moment. But I also sang opera for Bocelli, Andrea Bocelli, the greatest living tenor. He's like next to Pavarotti, you know. And I I I was driving in Beverly Hills, and I just out of the corner of my eye saw Bocelli, got out of the car and started singing Conte Partiro. I don't know. And it, it became a moment and it became a moment in TMZ history. No, I remember when you rapped for him, who was, the, um, you know, I remember you tell me a story. Well, I actually saw on your Instagram that you had a throwback photo of you and Norm McDonald. How was Norm McDonald? What kind of guy was he? Were, was he cool? Yeah. You know, this was towards the end of, of my tenure and I saw Norm. And I had been watching all these old clips, and in particular, the White House Correspondents' Dinner. What a brilliant, funny guy, you know, and just quirky and just, and he had, he had been through a lot of the news cycle from what he had said, and he went on The View, and he apologized. And I saw him, and we had already done the story. And this was weeks later, and I just said, you know what, let's not revisit this. I, did, I decided not to, to shoot him. I never shot Norm. And I just said, look, Norm, I, I said, I'm a TMZ guy, and I, you know, I want, I, I'm supposed to film you and interview you. And I just want to meet you and say you're my spirit animal. And I just, you know, and I, I never take selfies. And I think it comes from my days of working on set. It was like something you didn't do. It was like, yeah, I'm a PA. I'm going to go get a selfie with, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> one of the you know, cast members. You know, you just didn't do it. You know, so I, I never I probably took five selfies in, in 10 years, which is asinine. I, I kind of regret it a little bit. I, I took selfie with like Ryan Sandberg of the Cubs and I took a selfie with Norm. I took a selfie with I, I, I took probably five total and Dick Van Dyke. So and I just went I just wanted to get a picture with them and I just told him how much I love them. And he was he was dying of cancer. Because in the photo, he's real pale, and, and he, he kept it a secret. It's sad. It's sad. It's such a funny, nice guy and a sweetheart, yeah. it's, you know. Yeah. And, I, you know, I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm looking at your jersey. You're obviously wearing a Bulls jersey right now. Have you ever ran into – you're a big Rocky. basketball fan. Have you ran into any big, like, you know, Jordan, LeBron, maybe Kobe back in the day? Like, did you run into any of these huge basketball stars and – Still get Rodman calling me. Rodman Still calls Rodman. you. Yeah, Rodman called and said, "Hey, can you cover my tour? Maybe TMZ will take uh, will pay to come on my tour." He's touring across the U.S. in a bus, and I'm like, "I'm not long. I'm no longer with TMZ." 
Rodman, I covered his his birthday party in Vegas. Um, mm. I don't even know what I was in Vegas for. I was in Vegas for a fight, but I, there was a time at TMZ where they sent me everywhere, all these fights and stuff. And it was fantastic to, I went to Sundance. I traveled a lot. And so I was in Vegas and I was at a strip club with Rodman in the VIP, just me, Rodman, just filming him all night. Sweetest, most genuine guy. He was drunk off his rockers, just sipping <laughs> bigger. It was just, but it was the sweetest, nicest guy. He went around and he shook everybody's hand in this 40,000 square foot strip club, the Sapphire. And this is all on video. Like there's TMZ clip of it. It's like Robin's epic. You could see it on, on YouTube. And um, he, he got down on his knees for a guy on a wheelchair and was like literally like holding his hand. And I mean, just the nicest, sweetest guy. And I think he got a little tired of the whole Kim Jong-un stuff. Because mm-hmm. kind of you know there was some people painting him as a traitor and all this, and he was just you know he's a pretty simple guy, but yeah, Rodman and uh, the nicest guy besides Shaq, who's a sweetheart and uh, who Adam's very close with, Charles Barkley. Mm-hmm. What a nice guy! And I was, I grew up kind of in fear of him because he was like a, a a bully on the court, but he's the and, and a lot of bullies on screen. They end up they're like the nicest guys in the world. Charles Barkley is the nicest athlete that I ever interacted with. What a genuine just sweetheart. And I, I adore him. So when I was growing up, because I'm out here in California in Orange County, Rodman w- had this beach house, this famous beach house right on the sand in, in Newport Beach. And the funny thing about it, was he would have just these raging parties all the time. But he had a neon sign on the back side that would face the water and he would turn it on and it would say open. And that means anyone on the beach that wanted to come party at his house could just walk on in and party when his neon wow. open sign was on. Wow. And I remember this growing up, like you would always be out there and you're looking to see if his neon sign was on. And I saw him all the time in Newport going into restaurants. He'd be riding around on his like beach cruiser all he would just go in, grab food, go out. I mean, I ran into Rodman so many times down in Newport. He was just like the local celeb everyone knew and had this pink house on the beach with the open sign. But yeah, I just re- always remember that. That's incredible. That is so cool. <laughs> Joe, I want to ask you, when you were at TMZ, were you there when Kobe Bryant died? Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah, was that and that was in Malibu, right? Or was it Malibu? Or where was where was the it's in the hills of Malibu? Oh, yeah, it was Calabasas. Cal- it was Agura Hills, Agura Hills, Calabasas area. It was right, right by the yeah. So, so you were there where the live. when it all happened? Yeah, so I was I was at Sundance. And so I what an epic event to cover. So I was on the main street at Sundance. It was the middle of the day, and we got the news first. You know, we had, a, had my work phone on me, and I was full gung ho mode that day. I was like, when I'm on assignment, I'm ready. I'm like dialed in. And so, just celebrity filled Sundance. This is twenty, you know, twenty twenty, February twenty seventh, I believe. But um, I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting for Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton went into some thing, and I was going to ask her some boring question about Bernie Sanders. And so while she was wait while she was in there, Kobe, we got the news. Kobe passed. It, the news had not it, it hadn't hit the wire yet. Uh, they, the TMZ got it out probably ten minutes later, five minutes later. I don't know. So Hillary comes out, and I'm just like, hey, Hillary, what do you think about the passing of Kobe Bryant? And she didn't answer, which is expected. I was like, okay, Hillary's not going to answer that. She just looked and she like did a double take went into another event because she's doing the the movie the press tour she's on the strip she's going from variety to like you know uh entertainment weekly she's going to different magazines and stuff to do the press so very interesting she when she's inside after i asked her secret service they uh they stripped the whole street they swept the street but left me which was weird. I didn't know what was going on. They didn't tell me anything. They just got everybody out there. 
and it was just me on the street when she with her car waiting for her. And I was like, that's weird. They're just kind of ignoring me. What the hell? I think she told Secret Service, the TMZ guy, leave him there because I want to respond to his question about Kobe. Mm. She comes out and she said, I can't believe she just comes right up to me. She comes out and I'm just like, I'm very rarely starstruck. I probably got starstruck three times. You know, Will Smith starstruck me. You know, that was it was it was weird. It was like Will Smith it was random. But I was a little nervous. It's Hillary Clinton, you know? You don't see this every day. She comes right up to me and she just says, when you told me that, I didn't know what you were talking about. Then I got on my phone and I looked and I saw he died. He died. And I just, I'm heartbroken. And she gave her lament and she gave her condolences on camera. It was the first reaction we got because it was like 10 minutes after it happened, after the news had broke. And so- That was really interesting to have to adjust to that and get a very human moment from her, you know, when, 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 you know, she's been, well, it was that, that moment was so shocking that like, even without a camera in my face, I was like blown away. Like, no, this can't be true. This can't be true. So to be a, you know, someone in her position with authority and power and fame and all of that kind of stuff and feeling like she needed to answer and, uh, that was a really interesting story, though. She swept the street and got yeah, rid of everyone them. except for you. Yeah, for that, wow. for that, that whole block. And I was like, that's really weird. I sat there for 10, 15 minutes while I waited. I was like, that's weird that they just kept me. But now it, it makes sense. I, I, that's my theory, and I think it's accurate. But, yeah, you're right. When the news broke, every, the whole street was just packed. Like Sundance on the Main Street in Park City is just packed with people, celebrities alike. Everybody stopped. Kobe died, Kobe died, Kobe died. The whole street, everybody stopped and was literally like in tears because it was, you know, very emotional. Yeah. Like, you know, so seven crazy. people. How yeah. many, uh, to change it up, how was your experiences dealing with Mel Gibson? Well, Mel and I have a love-hate relationship. I mean, it was <laughs> Mel. That's nice. I just have a hate-hate relationship with Mel Gibson, so... <laughs> Yeah, That's good well, for you. There's an iconic photo that I have that X17 took where he's coming at me, and I'm I'm bigger than Mel. Like I power, I'm like, dude, you know, I'm just a bigger dude. I'm bigger than Braveheart, guys. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> back off, bro. He's coming at me because he thought that I was the paparazzi that was kind of taking photos of his kids. I wasn't. That I was just mm-hmm. like ready to get a soundbite. I didn't do that. You know, there was a paparazzi that was taking photos of his kids. He came out. He was real pissed. There was this Did he ask you if you were Jewish too, and that's why he's coming after well, you? I, that's a whole other story we'd have to ask. Uh, <laughs> Mel is someone that I admired his filmmaking before I got into this. You know, before the incident, before everybody knew that the anti Semitic thing, you know, we all saw Braveheart. Great filmmaker, we, Apocalypto, Passion of the Christ. These are great films, you know. But that happened. It tainted everything. There was an incident where the TMZ dispatched me to Agura Hills to a bar called The Lab. Okay, it used to be called the Buddha Bar, and Mel Gibson was having dinner there. And so they sent me there, and there was one other paparazzi there. Okay, Mel comes out. He had just served jury duty, and this paparazzi is running around like crazy. As soon as he comes out, this paparazzi is running after him, like making sure he gets the shot. It's like, dude, chill. He's just, he's going to go to his car, get shot. Bell's friend decides to attack the paparazzi. So he goes and he trips him. This old man who Mel was having dinner with, it was probably working on something, you know, some random dinner guest. They're probably having a meeting. This random dinner guest goes and tries to trip the paparazzi. Mel thinks the paparazzi attacked the guy, but which was warranted because the paparazzi was running around like crazy. It was like, dude, chill out. Just get the shot. <laughs> so the pop Mel accuses, this is all on camera. You can, it's the Mel trip and fall incident. It's on YouTube. You can look it up. Mel decides this paparazzi attacked guy but that didn't happen it was the guy who attacked the paparazzi 
So the paparazzi runs after being wrongfully detained by Mel. Like, you did this, da 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 the, the paparazzi flees. I stayed for the cops because they called the cops. So I sat in the parking lot with Mel and his, his party for 30 minutes waiting for the cops. It took 30 minutes. Mel is smoking cigarettes. People are coming out. And I'm talking to Mel. And I'm like, hell, well, you want to watch the video? I showed him the video. I'm like, you know, Braveheart's a great movie. You know, Passion of Christ. <laughs> really good filmmaking. I like what they did with the teardrop at the end of Jesus. You know? <laughs> so I'm sitting talking to Mel. And people are, it was so weird because people would get out of their car to go to dinner. And this isn't a celebrity hotspot. It's called a lab. It's brewing in Gur Hill. And Mel Gibson's just sitting there in the parking lot. And there's people like, what's Mel Gibson? What's this guy doing? So I, I waited for the cops with Mel. And the, the cops came. I showed them the video. The cops showed that there was no wrongdoing by the paparazzi or me. And eventually that, that paparazzi sued Mel. Oh. Yeah. And they settled. They settled. And the paparazzi always called me. He's like, yo, bro, I'm going to give you money. I'm like, I don't want your money. You know, he's like, you got the video. If it wasn't for you, you know, um, I wouldn't have this uh, settlement. You know, he probably got like 20 grand. <laughs> wow. For being wrongfully detained. Wrongfully okay. detained. Well, yeah. as we're on the topic of Mel Gibson being a dick, because there's no other thing to call him other than a dick. Uh, can we play a quick game with you? Sure. And it'd be rate your experience with this celeb from one to 10, 10 being cool, one being a dick. All gotcha. right. Yeah. So I'm we'll give you a name and here. you'll just, you'll give us a number. Okay. All right. Harrison Ford from one to 10 on the cool factor, 10 being cool, one being a dick, Harrison Ford. Dick, big time dick. Really? Yeah. All I asked him, I asked him two questions. I've got him twice. I said, what's your idea of them? My mom gave me this question. It was when I first started. I was like, what do I ask Mel Harrison Ford, mom? She goes, ask him what his idea of an American hero is. My mom's like a gender studies professor. She's like, ask him what his idea of, of American hero is, because he's always portrays a hero. I said, <laughs> sure. What's your idea of an American hero? What's your ideal idea of an American hero? Decent question, actually, in retrospect. Gave me a uh, second time. I, I I saw him, and there was a story about him eating uh, Panda Express. Okay. okay. And I said, what's your favorite thing to eat at Panda Express? He said, you and I don't play this game. And then he goes, you and I are in different businesses. I don't play this game. Oh, wow. Those are my two interactions. I'm, I am shocked. I yeah. feel like people love Harrison Ford. I'm actually totally surprised to hear your answer. All right. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. What a, what great story it was like a carpenter got the gig on as Han Solo. Great actor, nice hair, nice hair, you know. But yeah, he was a dick to me twice. All right, All right. ten being cool, one being a dick. Reese Witherspoon. Ooh, sure. Where are they in that? Where, in that, where, in that, where are they in that chart? Yeah, you know, I think Reese is probably nice. She's always with her kids, so she's always standoffish with with Pabs. I actually didn't shoot her much. Actually, to be honest, I didn't shoot girls that much. I was like the guy, like 90% of my clips were all guys. Cause I, as a guy, I felt more comfortable approaching uh, guys. And I really just didn't, I, I didn't feel comfortable approaching women. I get it. Okay. Well, I got one for you. Yeah. You being the Malibu photog, you have had to have run into Courtney Cox. So Courtney Cox on a scale of one to 10, one being a dick, 10 being cool. Where did she rate? Only ran into her once at Nobu. Uh, I think I asked her about um, what's it, Arquette. I think I did. David. Um, yeah, she's okay. She's okay. She was nice. Um, gosh, she looks just like that other girl. There's another celebrity looks exactly like her. Can't remember who it is. Uh, Demi Courtney Moore. Cox. Who? I was gonna say maybe Demi Moore. I don't know if I would. Yeah, Demi Moore. Yes. Adam, you're on, spot on. Demi Moore and Courtney Cox look so alike. It's kind of weird, especially in their, you know, older. They're, 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 they're both beautiful. Um, Courtney Cox, cool. Kind of cool. She talked a little. What's the number? Ooh, like a seven, ten. like a five. What are we going with? I'm going to give her about a seven. She okay. was decent. She was decent. Okay. Uh, well, Jennifer Fergie. Aniston. Okay. One to ten. Ten being cool. One a dick. Fergie. Never saw Fergie. Never once saw her. 
not in, not on all my days of Hollywood, even before TMZ. Never saw her. Never right. saw du- Dumel either. Really? No. Okay. What about Tyrese? One to ten. One being cool, or one being a dick, ten being cool. Total dill rod. He was a dude. <laughs> he was a dick. He was a dick. He's like a real dick. He's like a, he was a jerk. I think he said something very standoffish too. He's like out in front of Nobu, had his like car. It had like the the bumps. His beats were bumping. Showed his two ten woofers in the back. He was super dickish. Yeah, Tyrese <laughs> is not cool. Uh, All right, got a one for a, one yeah. for Tyrese. Uh, ten being cool, one a dick. Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon's cool. I'll give Nick Cannon a. a this is kind of controversial right now, but uh, yeah, uh, Nick Cannon's very nice guy. I think he was about an eight. Okay. Did you ever run into Paul McCartney? Never, no, but I love this that one clip Chris Lance had with him. I, I heard mm. Paul's not very nice. Okay. Ten being cool, one being a dick. Taylor Swift. Oh, incredible. At Sundance, uh, Taylor Swift is a genuinely, uh, unless she was putting on a show, she, I, she took a selfie with, and this is on video, it's on it's on YouTube, you can see it. She took a selfie with every, like a thousand of her fans. Uh, outside of her movie premiere, and I, I think she's a really genuine person. I'm going to give Taylor Swift a 10. Cool. Glad she's tricked you. Okay, number ah. pink. <laughs> we, we, we briefly mentioned pink. 10 being cool, one being a dick. Your answer better be a 10, or you're getting cut off of this podcast, but I go really, for I want to be on the show again. <laughs> I, I think I'm going to be like a reoccurring character. Uh, so I'm going to... Pink? I never disliked pink. I think Pink had the wrong idea, but it's a long story about Pink too. I think she had the wrong idea me, about me at first uh, because of the element that I was in, mm-hmm. you know? Um, eventually, I'm going to say Pink is a total real chick, and I, I'm going to give her a 10. Because, Good answer. Good because, answer, Joe. Because it's it, it, it was, it, I saw her go, like, I saw her treat me as a human and say, okay, let's give this guy the benefit of the doubt. And then Carrie, sweetheart, Carrie had something to do with it too. Great shit. Loved, loved Pink. And I missed her in Malibu. She left. Yeah. She left. I don't know. She left in like 2014. So 10 being cool, one be a dick. Channing Tatum. Never saw Tatum outside of Magic Mike. Uh never saw I never saw that movie. Uh yeah, never saw never saw Channing Tatum. So you just never saw him at all. I'm gonna switch Channing Tatum with you. Then Brody Jenner. 10 being cool, one being a dick. Brody Jenner is one of the best friends that I made at TMZ. Um, really? Brody came up, yeah. Brody came up to me at the Pikey in Hollywood in back in 2012, and he said, "Hey man, I just want to tell you how much I respect you, and I want to thank you for giving my, me my space and respect uh, in Malibu because he's one of the he's the prince of Malibu." Yeah. Brody Jenner's the prince, the, the nicest, most genuine guy you could ever meet. I love Brody Jenner, and you know he's one of my people that follow me on Instagram. I follow him, whatever. Like you know, and I have his, you know, I don't keep in contact with him constantly, but I have his number if anything, you know, if if I needed to reach right. out for 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 a story or something, I've reached out to him before. But really sweet guy. Have you ran into Kerry yeah. Washington? Hmm? Okay, so Kerry Washington, 10 being cool, one being a dick, where do you rate her? Well, I interviewed her before I was at TMZ. I used to do red carpet stuff for Black Tree TV. I was the first white reporter for this red carpet, uh, Black Tree TV. They do junkets and stuff. They didn't know I was white. <laughs> they, hired me. <laughs> they hired me. He's like, Dude, I didn't know you were white, but yeah, you're great, you know? So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I was the first white reporter, but I interviewed her. She's a real sweetheart, real okay. sweetheart. Okay. Well, I don't know about I, 10. I'll give her like, I don't know if she's like that genuine. So I'm going to give her a seven. Okay. 10 being cool, one being a dick. Uh, I want to go somewhere. Clint Eastwood. Ooh, good old Clint. Um, so I saw Clint after my TM. I never saw him during my TMZ tenure. So after I, after TMZ let me go, I went to Carmel with my mom and I was just walking the street with Carmel. Obviously, we, we all know Mel lives up in Carmel, probably the most beautiful city in California. And um, I had covered Carmel with TMZ, didn't see Mel. I went covered the Pebble Beach Pro Celebrity Pro-Am several years ago. And so Mel, uh, 
Clint gets out of his car. Like we're just walking. All of a sudden Clint gets out to go get a newspaper. Here he is, an 85 year old guy going to get a newspaper. I just said, Clint, Gran Torino is one of my favorite movies, pal. Thanks for your work. Thanks for making that movie. And he was just like, yeah, Uh, you know, I'm going to give Clint, I'm going to give, I don't, I'm going to give Clint an eight based on that interaction. What is, you know, I love Gran Torino. You know, it's like my grandfather. (laughs) <laughs> what a, what a, everything is summed up with Gran Torino. Just watch Gran Torino. You know who Clint Eastwood is. Pretty Great much. Guy. Yeah. And he he's a he's a definite one in that movie just because he's a dick. But he's, he's acting. A dick. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, but the dick, but but he but the fact that he takes in that kid at the end. No, oh, I was I'm just messing. He was he, he was everything. he was just the movie. <laughs> well, yeah. All right. Well, so, cool. Here's my last one for you. J Lo. One being, uh, one being a dick, ten being cool. Where do you rate J Lo? I I only saw J Lo once. She did not get out of the car. I walked by. We're at some event. I don't know. I was in Hollywood. I was working some event. I walked by and I saw J Lo in her in her in her Bentley. Mm-hmm. And just by from looking, I'm gonna give her a ten. <laughs> No, I, I don't. I don't know how. I don't know how she would be interaction, but the vibe I got from her, she was gorgeous. It was. It was yeah. unbelievable. Yeah. What a. I want. So, I want to hear. I remember you told me something about the, the Malibu mob. Is that true? Like, what? What is this Malibu? Yeah, what's mob Malibu about? mob? Well, Google the Malibu mob, guys. This is great. This is great content for 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 you guys' platform. It really is. The Mal- Malibu is old Hollywood. So the Malibu mob consists of a, a network of, of fellows, gentlemen that are Malibu legends. Okay. And it's, it's Laird Hamilton. Okay, the patriarch, the patriarch of the Malibu mob is Don Wildman. Don Wildman is the, he is credited to start fitness centers in the world, in America. The way the, what we know is modern fitness is is Don Wildman. Okay, so is it is it all these guys? Is it like John, John McEnroe, John Cusack, John, John McKinley, yeah. Kid Rock, Tony Chris Danza? Chelios, Chris Chelios. So funny. Okay. All right, so Hamilton, got... John McGinley, John Cusack, Don Wildman, John McEnroe, John Cusack, like you said, um, and, uh, and yeah, it's about six or seven guys. But they take in guys. They take in athletes. Actually, they take in. They took in Joe Kim Noah. They took in. I think they took in Jimmy Butler. But they take in guys and train them, like to be super athletes. They'll go in Laird's pool and put on like weights and like do like weight training under the in the water. Like they'll take in these super athletes for the summer, and they'll teach them to surf and stuff. So it's the Malibu Mob, John Cusack, etc. But McEnroe. Okay, so there was one day I, I, I became close with Laird Hamilton. Very close to the point where it's like Larry would come up to me and say, thanks for being so cool. You're the man, but until there was one story, I don't want to get into that story. Maybe another time there was a story that was ran that I shot that room that like Gabrielle was pretty pissed because he's married to Gabrielle Reese. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get into that story now, but if you wanted to later. So during the time Don Wildman was like, Hey, Laird and I started this new company called the golf board. It's a surfboard golf cart, okay? So it's a it's it's like a board that like you put your your golf bag on the back and you surf, but it's like electric. It's like a Segway slash surfboard, right? So instead of a golf cart, they're surfing along the freaking country club. So Don's like, hey, you know, I want you to come out and film. I want you to come out to the Malibu Country Club and film us on the golf board. The Malibu mob. He didn't call it the Malibu mob, but it was the freaking Malibu mob. Because Don is Don was the OGs, the Godfather. He sold his fitness centers to Bally's. He's like a billionaire, and so all Bally's turned into LA Fitness. That's how wealthy this guy is. He's Jack Lalane. He makes Jack Lalane look like John Coltrane. So like I don't know, you know. And so Don invites me out, and I'm familiar with Laird, right? Not too familiar with McEnroe. Okay. And McGinley. McGinley, not very nice. All right. So I'm on, they give me my own golf cart. They don't give me a golf board. They give me a golf cart to follow them around and, sh- and shoot them 18 holes during my shift. I text Diana and said, Diana, I'm going to be off the grid for a while because it's Malibu Country Club is in the middle of nowhere. 
So I go out to the middle of nowhere to the Malibu Country Diana's Club. Diana's your boss, by the way. So yeah, Diana's my boss. Yeah. Okay. So I text her. I say I'm going. I'm going on assignment. I'm going to film with the Malibu Mob, etc. Don Wildman, Laird Hamilton, on on a golf course. It's a setup. And so I go out with them, 18 holes. I'm the only one not golfing. I'm just filming them. Okay. About three holes in. So it's 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 McGinley, Laird, Don Wild, and I got pictures. Don Wildman, Laird, McEnroe, McGinley, and a couple other guys. Not Chelios, but a couple other guys, right? Probably like six guys and me. And about three holes in, Don Wildman's like, hey, now the fun's going to begin, guys. He breaks out his chocolate. He has his own line of chocolate edibles, right? <laughs> and I don't, I don't, I don't, at this point, I don't smoke weed. I'm not in my 20s. Like, life isn't Disneyland. Like, I get paranoid off weed. I live in LA. There's helicopters. Like, it makes me paranoid. And, I, and I'm working, you know, I need to drive home an hour and a half to Hermosa Beach. <laughs> it's like, I'm good. But Don's like, if you're going to do this, you're, you're going to eat this with us. And he peer pressured me into taking an edible. <laughs> so he gives me the chocolate bar, a big piece. And I take, I actually broke in half and, and took it, you know, because he wanted, he was like, you're eating this, da, 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 you know, you're part of this right today, whatever the hell. I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. Like I'm the Malibu mom, Mac and Rose here. This guy's intimidating. <laughs> Next thing you know, man, like I, I have a low tolerance for weed. You know, like I am out of my mind. Like my mind's in orbit. And here, here, here I am with McGinley, the guy from Scrubs, the guy from Bob, the Bob from Office Space, you know, John McEnroe. I grew up watching smashing tennis rackets at Wimbledon. And you're high He's as a kite with him. <laughs> high as a kite in the middle of the day, middle of the day in Malibu of all places in the middle of nowhere with no cell service. And I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I have a camera and I have to justify my day. Cause like this, I'm working. I need to get a clip. <laughs> and here Don Wildman just wants to promote his golf board. <laughs> we don't do promotional videos. TMZ didn't do promotional videos, but I didn't, I, I still thought they would run it. So here's the thing. So I'm I'm high as a kite, and all of a sudden, and I have I have video of this on my cell phone, and I no video on, on my, uh, the regular camera. Back and row starts fucking smashing freaking golf clubs. Like he's literally like like pissed off and, and doing the Mac and row thing. I'm like this. Oh, is that's cool. amazing. It was amazing, and he was pissed, and they're all like talking shit. McEnroe kind of ignored me. McGinley was being cool. Wildman, Laird was cool. But at the end, I was trying to get sound bites because that's our job, right? Adam is like, we need to get sound bites. I need to get a clip. I need to like ask them something. And I was too stoned. I was too <laughs> stoned. I, I, I crammed up. And how I made it home that day, I, I, I don't even, I have no idea. I probably was, like, probably took me four hours to get home. <laughs> I, get I love it. it. I get it. So, Joe, we would do another thing. I want to do a little speed round with you. I just want to see what's the first thing that comes to your mind. Um, so let's start with this, right? First thing that comes to your mind, nicest celebrity. Nicest celebrity, I'm going to have to go Dick Van Dyke. Angriest celebrity. Angriest Sean Penn. Okay. Funniest celebrity. <sighs> Damn, that's tough. Funniest celebrity, Norm MacDonald. I kind of want to say Andy Milanakis for some reason. Like mm -hmm. he's kind of funny, but uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say Norm Macdonald. Best looking male celebrity. Best looking male celebrity is going to be. Okay, so when I saw George Clooney, I always thought George Clooney was the epitome of good looking. But for mm -hmm. some reason, when I saw George Clooney, I covered this part. I, I broke a story about George Clooney's uh, George Clooney's uh, uh, engagement party was at. Cindy Crawford's restaurant, Cafe Habana, and yep. Bono was there. I broke that. Like, I knew about it before. Like, I, you know, like, I I got it. It was my exclusive. And um, because I was friends with uh, Cindy Crawford's brother-in-law, he loved me. And he was like, hey, 
you know, uh, George Clooney's having his engagement party here, by the way. I was like, holy shit, thanks for that tip. <laughs> so, and so um, I thought his head was a little, like, weird. Like, his head, was it, was, it wasn't shaped like I thought. His head was a little, like, I don't know. So um, the best-looking male celebrity, I'm going to have to go with – it's a, it's I'm gonna have to go Keanu. Okay. What about woman? I'm gonna have to go Monica Bellucci. Okay. And okay. and Jennifer Aniston. I, I love Jennifer Aniston. I saw Jennifer. An- I was around Jennifer Aniston on the movie The Breakup for a long time, and she is glowing in person. Um, uh, Jennifer Aniston is glowing. Okay. Uh, most random place you ever ran into a celebrity? Hmm. That's a great question. This is gonna. This is. This is like. Not gonna. I don't. I'm. There. There's so many. Most random place. Damn. There's a lot. Um, I had someone recently. Actually, yeah, just ahead, say, I'll, I'll say as you think. I ran into a Ian Dior. He's like the rapper. You know. Uh, you know. Like I, I ran into him at a hotel bathroom. But like as we're both in the urinals, I was like, and I was just really surprised that I ran into him. And I was kind of not starstruck by any means, but I was like, whoa, hey, man, I'm a fan. And like, I just like I just listened to a podcast. He was on. I was like, oh, and I just like, and he's like, oh, that, he was really nice. You about talked it. to him just, while he was peeing. Yeah, but it was just very Adam. Like, that is such a no go zone. Like you don't talk to someone well, when they're pissing, bro. He was like finishing yeah. up and I walked in. He was going like going to Washington. I was like, oh, shit. And uh, it was like a, it was a really small, tight, like not so nice <laughs> bathroom. Yeah, I had one person to talk to me while I was pissing, and it was the most awkward shit ever. I was like, this is the one time I don't want to be talking to you about my days at TMZ is right now. Please yeah, don't talk to people I know, while they're pissing. I mean, listen, the bathroom's like so easy. But yeah, do you, can you think of anything, Joe? Yeah, that's like a curb your enthusiasm moment, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So no, you reminded me, when I was a kid, uh, I used to go to Bulls games with my grandpa. So at the old Chicago Stadium, I walked into the restroom that was kind of like not the celebrity area or whatever. And so I walked in the restroom and Gene Siskel was peeing next to me. I was, I was probably 12 and Gene, the late Gene Sis- Siskel, uh, the, the movie critic with Siskel and Ebert. Um, so he's peeing right next to me. No, I didn't go two thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> so, but I waited, I waited until we had, and I, I, I think I had the good wherewithal, wherewithal as a kid waited till we washed our hands simultaneously. And I said, Gene Siskel, right? Pleasure to meet you, sir. I ran to Gene Siskel in a restroom at Chicago Stadium. Nice. All right. Who was, who was the one celebrity that loved the attention the most? Whew, that's a great question. That is a really good question. Besides Byling. Besides Byling. By <laughs> you guys remember her? She was the best. I do, yeah. It's got to be Paris. It's got to be Paris. Okay. Hilton. She just she opens up and glows when she's when she's there. Like she, she just, just knows how to work it. With attention. She gets she, it. She, she opens up, and I I think she's really beautiful, and I think she's nice and kind. I, yeah. I really like Paris Hilton, and because of that, so I, I would say Paris Hilton loves. She basks in that type of attention. Coolest athlete. I'm gonna have to go, Sir Charles, man. I call him my Uncle Charles. It's like Bone Thugs and Harmony, you know, like uh, their Uncle Charles. Like he, he's like an uncle instantly. Like I haven't had like more than five interactions with the guy, but the ones I have, it's just like he is the coolest. Great right. guy, yeah. Coolest rapper, but you can't say Snoop Dogg. Coolest rapper. Oh, man. It's, it's got to be big. All right, I handicapped you. Who is it? So I met, I met my idols. I, Outcast, I grew up. Outcasts are my idols. So I met both of them. Andre I didn't film. Andre hates the camera. Andre doesn't so like it, but he was very nice when he has for like he's very nice guy, but he doesn't very like Very nice. But yeah. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say all those dungeon family guys are nice. Big Gip, Killer Mike, all those guys, uh Big Boy. I'm gonna have to say Big Boy's probably the nicest. I'm gonna I, I, Killer Mike's a sweetheart. Like he is super nice, but since I'm a bigger fan of Outcast, I'm gonna say Big Boy. Cool. Nice um, Person who will, when you see, and if you're working, they're like, I, I would love this. I just walk away from just to avoid the the interactions, just avoid the fight, any of that. Man, there's there, there's not many. That's the thing. There are ten years of, of interacting with so many celebrity, 
there's there's really not that are that despicable that you want to walk away from. Um, Eric Andre became that for me. Uh, Eric Andre, like I was backstage at a Wu Tang concert because I was filming with Raekwon and Ghostface because I had previously, you know, befriended Ghostface, and I was at South by Southwest. He's like, "Hey, come, you're gonna come backstage, film it." I was backstage. This wasn't even that long ago, several years ago. I'm backstage at a Wu-Tang concert. I never saw Wu-Tang live. And I'm I'm like so excited. I wasn't drunk, wasn't even remotely like buzzed off anything because I'm on assignment. Like you can't drink on assignment because anything can happen. I need I might have to go cover something. I might have to drive. I'm in rental cars. I was at South by Southwest. Eric Andre, I, I was so excited. I was like backstage and Eric Andre just happened to be next to me at this concert. So I run into Eric Andre in LA like a week later and I start filming him. He was like, hey, you're the idiot that was drunk backstage at the Wu-Tang concert. I was like, dude, what are you talking about? I was just excited to see Wu-Tang. I was drunk. Like, what are you talking about? He, he, he was a total douche. And hmm. you know, for that I'll never I, I'll never think he's funny or anything. Like, I don't know. Like killed it for you, huh? He killed it for me. And I, I would avoid him. If I saw him and I, I have avoided him. I'm like, dude, Eric Andre and Sean Penn. There's been very few like interactions like that. And the thing is about this lifestyle and this job, even if they're a douche or a dick to you in the past, give him another chance. Like Pierce Brosnan, he was a dick to me a couple times. I gave him another chance. Shot him again, and he was cool. You never know; they might be in a bad mood. So, yep. all right, who is the who is the biggest name in your phone? Biggest name in my phone? I mean, it depends. If we're going tabloid, are we going like? Um, geez, uh, the first one <laughs> probably Deepak Chopra. Okay, that's a fun one. I got I got Aaron Carter. I mean, I, I opened my phone. I got a couple right. I mean, there. everyone's got Aaron Carter's number. Right. Um, I'm gonna say <laughs> I'm gonna say Deepak because of the uh, Oprah connection. Okay, that's a good one. Okay, I love it. Uh, mine. Where is the best bathroom in Malibu? Country Mart. No. Um, no. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, uh, easiest accessible one is Country Mart. The one on the side, like in the little like. As you're going down, yeah, that's been ran through, bro. It's been what? <laughs> it's been ran through. <laughs> Dude, I've, I've seen logs. Like, like you don't want to like. Uh, All right, no, I don't. Think that's not my. Life. Who's the no. celebrity that you run into the most? No, in I, I, it's the Mal. It's the Tranka's dog park. There's a dog park way north in Malibu behind Tranka's Canyon. There's this like remote dog park that no one goes to untouched my my cheeks are the only ones that have ever (laughs) i love it joe you have been awesome thank you much so much for stopping by we'll definitely have you back to do some more tales of a paparazzi it's just such a fascinating lifestyle i want to thank you both for for asking these questions it's been very uh cathartic and therapeutic because I, i spent a decade just asking people questions it's nice to be on the receiving end and, and getting questions asked to me. It really is. It really is. You're a legend, Joe, and man. I appreciate it. He's, uh, uh, you know, listen, Joe is so good at what he did. I mean, he, the stuff, the boundaries, the people he got to speak to that never speak to anyone else, and they only spoke to Joe. He's so good at what he does. Follow Joe on Instagram at the dot joy dot of dot everything. Um, he's a fun follow, but he's uh, – the guy's a legend. He's got great stories. We got to have him back on. Joe, thank you so much for coming on the Hollywood Raw. Yeah, you guys are both legends, and thank you for doing this. Thank you for doing your work, man. Both you guys. Thank you. I love talking to, uh, you know, camera guys, paparazzis. It's so good. I don't, you know what it is? It's like. It's the stories that you don't get to hear. That's what's fun about it. That's why, what, And it, I think that's why our audience loves it so much. I just love to see, like, hey, what do you think this guy? Was he cool? Was he a dick? You know, bottom line. That's what I want to know. Because, you know, uh, Joe mentioned Eric Andre. I actually have a good relationship with Eric Andre because I knew him before he was someone. I used to, we used to hang around the city line doing sketches together. I love Eric Andre. But, like, he talked to Tom Cruise. 
And then that Hillary Clinton story, like they, they, she wanted to talk to him. You know how much uh, shit I'm going to get for him saying though now that Taylor Swift was awesome. <laughs> like people are just gonna be hitting me up in my DMs. Uh, I just like the second it came out of his mouth, I'm like, oh, here we go, stirring yeah. up the Swifties again. I know. I mean, listen, we go back and forth, but I'm mostly back. Like 95 percent our batting average with Taylor Swift being a dick <laughs> is pretty good. This Joe just did a single. Like, no, 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 she's actually not a bad person. Um, oh, yeah, I like so him. We gotta have him back on because he's got so many. He's got so many more stories. Dude, the the Santa. amount of like, listen, guys, we do read all your comments. We're reading your comments because the reason we wanted to get a Papa on this week was because we saw so many of you saying how much you loved the paparazzi interviews. And we're like, who have we not had on yet? So, uh, you know, thanks again for, you know, giving us the feedback. We enjoy it. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of the Hollywood Raw podcast. Uh, make sure you guys are following us on social media. You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook youtube youtube audience is growing which is really good to see um but make sure you take a second leave us a review we really do appreciate these reviews um uh, apple has been blowing up we've been watching our podcast fly up the charts i mean we we topped out at number 44 on the all podcast charts the other day which was pretty fucking insane to say the least um we were number one in entertainment news so it's been really fun seeing uh, all these new ears coming to, to check us out. So thank you guys for taking the time. Uh, when you're also on our Facebook page, you can follow our private Facebook page, which is off the record. Uh, that's kind of where we talk about when we get tips or just fun little things we'll, we'll, we'll post up there. You guys can ask us questions directly where we can answer there. And uh, we just appreciate you guys. That's That's all it really comes down to. So thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Uh, again, leave a review. You can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. We're on it all. We have a really good TikTok page and Instagram page. Follow the Hollywood Road podcast. Find me at, at Adam Glynn, G-L-Y-N. Find Dax Holt at D-A-X-H-O-L-T. Thank you guys for listening. See you later. Bye-bye. What's up, guys? If you liked that video, there's plenty more that came from. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell so we can just feed you all the goodness daily. Hurry up. Come on. Let's go. Let's <laughs> go.